guys and welcome to this video on the empirical formula where we're going to be looking at how you can work out the empirical formula from the molecular formula and vice versa. You now have a choice of which part of the video you'd like to watch. You can either start with the calculating the empirical formula from the molecular mass or calculating the molecular formula from the empirical formula. If you choose to do nothing, the whole video will play in full. Click on the video you'd like to watch now. Now, in a previous video, we had already talked about the fact that the empirical formula is the simplest ratio of the atoms in that molecule. So if you're given a question that says find the empirical formula of C3H9 and it's only worth one mark, it's a simple question. You don't have to do any high level calculations with it. All you need to do is figure out the largest number that both of them can be divided by that gives you a whole number for each. So the next bit is a bit of trial and error. So you know that they can all be divided by one, so we're not going to include that. Can both be divided by two? No. Can they be divided by three? Yes. And because both of them can be divided by three, we then put that in. So three divided by three is one, nine divided by three is three, and that gives me an answer of one carbon, three hydrogens, which is CH3, which is my empirical formula. If we have a look at a second example then, so we've got the empirical formula of C6H12O6. They can both, all three can be divided by two, all three can be divided by three, they can't be divided by four, but they can't be divided by five, and they can be divided by six. Now that is the maximum number you can go up to, so therefore divide all by six. Six by six is one, twelve by six is two, and six by six is one. Therefore my empirical formula is C1H2O1. Four questions on this then. So question one, for the following compounds work out the empirical formula. So you've got C5H10, Na10Br5O5, H2O2 and H2O. Have a go, pause the video and we'll see how you've done in a second. All right, let's see how you've done. So C5H10, both the C and the H can be divided by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2, which gives you CH2. Na10Br5O5, again both can be divided by 5, so 10 divided by 5 is 2, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I get Na2BrO. H2O2, both can be divided by 2, so that gives me HO. And then finally for number 4, it's a trick question, the simplest is 1, so it stays the same as H2O. One mark for each of those. Okay, in this situation then, you'll be given an empirical formula, which is CH2, and be told the molecular mass, the MR, and be asked what the molecular formula is. So the first thing you need to do is work out what the actual molecular mass of the empirical formula is. So that is, what is the molecular mass of CH2? You'll be given the atomic masses, which for carbon is 12 and hydrogen is 1, and therefore you have... 12 carbons and 2 times 1 is 2 hydrogen, which gives me 14 overall. The second step is how many times does that 14 fit into our MR for the molecule? So 56 divided by 14, which gives me 4. And my final step then is I know that I've got 4 lots of CH2, so I just multiply that up. So I have 4 carbons and then 2 times 4 is 8 hydrogens. So my molecular formula is C4H8. If we look at another example then, where we've got C2H6N with an MR of 88, my first step is to work out the molecular formula of C2H6N. So I've got 2 carbons, which is 2 times 12, which gives me 24. I have 6 hydrogens, which is 6 times by 1, which gives me 6 and then I have one nitrogen. So one times by 14 gives me 14. Add those together, and that gives me 44. So the next step is how many times does that 44 go into 88? So 88 divided by 44 gives me two, 
which leaves me with step three of multiplying my original compound by two. So C2H6N times by two gives me C4H12N2. We'll look at one question for this then. So it says a compound has an empirical formula of CH2O and a molecular mass of 180. Work out the molecular formula for the compound, which is worth two marks. And you've got the atomic masses below. So pause the video, have a think and have a go. Okay, let's see how well you've done then. So your first marking point is for working out the molecular mass. So carbon has an atomic mass of 12 and there's one of them. Hydrogen, atomic mass of one, there's two of them. And oxygen, atomic mass of 16 and there's one of them. Add all that together and you get 30. So one mark for having that. The second step is to divide the molecular mass that you were given by what you've just worked out. 18 divided by 30 is six. So you now know that you have six times that molecule. So you just need to multiply whatever number of each of those you had by that six. So carbon, we had one times it by six gives me six. Hydrogen, I had two times by six is 12. Oxygen, one times six is six, which gives me my answer of C6H12O6. So one mark for that, and one mark for the correct answer. If you'd written C6H12O6, you would have got all the two marks without any working. The review section for both parts of the video then is calculate the molecular formula for sodium chloride NaCl when it has a molecular mass of 526.5 and the atomic masses are 23 for sodium and 35.5 for chlorine. And then the second question is what is the empirical formula for sodium oxide Na14O7? Have we got both questions and that ends this video. Hi guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click the subscribe button down below and visit the website mrbarnstc.com for more.